No way will I get invited I'm already deep inside I can't shake it, I can't hide it I am the outsider No reason to get excited We don't have to be so divided I can't shake it Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Swansonville. I am Joe Finley. And I'm Angie Finley. We are the, the Swansons. Swansons. And today is our very first podcast. That's uh, right. It's called Swansonville. Swansonville. Welcome, welcome. And so um, we're going to do a number of different things uh, here on our podcast. One being is that we've decided to interview a special guest, um, somebody kind of close to home involved in our musical live so that'll be a part of, of every show including today we'll have our first special guest and what else are we going to do Ange? Uh, we'll just be chatting about different things that um, went on with us this past week I mean we do a lot of different things um, for the Swansons for music for work um, and we're working all the time so um, something new there's always an adventure always an adventure with the team Swansons Today we had an adventure, but before we get to that, let's talk about, uh, let's let our audience know um, kind of who we are and, and, and where we come from. If you don't know us, we are the Swansons. We're a musical group. We're a musical That's right. duo. And you might be wondering, where did we come up with the Swansons? Because when we introduced ourselves, we, our last name is, is Finley. That's correct. A lot of people think that our last name is Swansons and they call us Mr. and Mrs. Swansons, Swansons which, which is flattering we and we love that. Yeah. We respond to that. But our name is not Swansons. Uh, uh, it was a name that that we thought of um, in, a, in a joking way that, that, became, that applied itself to us in a very real way. Why don't you, why don't you tell them about that? Well, there was a, it was evolved kind of over a short period of time, but um, him and I were hanging out, and then when we started dating and going out to dinner and stuff, we, would, we, we were like two kids. We thought it was so funny to put in a fake name for right. a reservation, so we would, put, we would tell him Swanson's <laughs> for two, and then, of course, we would just be sitting there just waiting for them to say it just so we could giggle. Swanson's party of two. two. And here come the giggles. <laughs> yeah, so we did it again. We, we got a kick out of that. Yeah. And then it ultimately um, became official, right? That's right. Yeah. The one day when, one we, day. Were, when we went to the um, Staples, Staples Center, Center. Mm-hmm. to see Bob Seger. And an Orange County Register from the Orange County Register. That's right. And Angie's, Angie's holding up a picture now, um, right straight from the Orange County Register. And this was the front page of their entertainment section. The next day. And, uh, and go ahead and say how and this picture says, came about. Basically, he wanted to take some photos of some fans that were waiting outside to go inside. And when he took our photo, he's like, um, can you please give me your name? Because I need to put a name with the photo. And I looked right at Joe and I said, Bob and Tina Swanson. We came all the way from Chicago. I made up a whole story. I just went with it. I just ran with it. And I made up even first names too. <laughs> That's right. I think Angie might, may have actually uh, started the fake news, you know, uh, uh, way back in the day here. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so this little and fake news found its way to the front of the paper. And there it is. It says Bob and Tina Swanson who came over from Chicago to see Bob Seeger at the Staples Center. At which so, point we decided that it's official. We are now the sticking Swansons. Sticking with it. So we got with a graphic artist and we started designing a logo. And we, we just loved also like another reason why Swanson works for us and why, we did, why didn't we just pick the Smiths or the, you know, anything like that. And the reason why is because we love the animal, the swan. And we th- thought it represented a heart. Two swans, heart, love, right, peace, music, passion, um, and that was kind of our mission. And so we designed the logo, and ever since then we were like, "This is it." So we're, we're the, the Swansons. Swansons. So we are the Swansons, and that's how that came about. And um, we are. We just finished our. We're in the process of finishing our fourth album. Um, the first two albums were pop rock albums, independently uh, released, mm-hmm. and our last album. Uh, we went to Nashville a year ago, and we made Country This. And uh, so now we're in a new lane, and we're staying there as an alternative, alternative country, country, pop, pop rock, rock and band. Roll. Rock and okay. roll. So more specifically, we, we went to Nashville to make a record with a producer, uh, Bill Watson. And 
we had a small collection of songs that we thought uh, could potentially cross over to the that's country right. market. And that, so that's what we brought to the table at the, at the, at the time. Uh, Bill uh, liked our music, liked us. Uh, we began engaging with him and um, started writing the following songs to complete the album. And after the better part of six months or so, we uh, had this new product um, in our new genre, Country This. That's and we, right. And we, I have to ask you something, yes. too. So because, because you are the songwriter... So when you when we did make that transition as a songwriter, do you feel like do you just do what you do as far as like writing songs, or did you try to um, you know be more country? I guess I could say I really took it to heart when we went to Nashville. Um, there's a lot of tradition there, you know, and and the people that we're working with are extremely traditional. And, and, and I don't want to jump so far outside of that tradition and have people dislike what we're doing as if we're doing a, a disservice to traditional country music. So, so it, it has been my intention to digest as much of the country music that's current and past while I'm writing and working through this experience with you as the Swansons so that, so that, that what's coming in is influencing me in a way that, that can, can be a positive influence and, 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 and therefore my songs that I'm writing are going to be more country. Right. Just, just, just generally speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying hard to stay in that vein with my own individuality. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not course. trying to conform to the point where it's like, oh my goodness, what have you done? What happened to your writing? It's still my writing style. However, I'm applying it in this genre which we have adopted as our own and, and, and plan to continue to do so for the rest of our lives. So, so yes, I, I have changed my writing and, and it is definitely more country. Yeah. And you just keep spitting out song after song. I mean, it's just amazing. Well, you do have you. a gift. I, I, well, thank you very much. Um, I have uh, been very fortunate in this uh, endeavor to be inspired by you and, and the Lord thank and you. people around us. Um, and, and so these songs just keep coming and um, I'm praying that they never run out because we are having so much fun doing what we're doing, singing the way we're singing, enjoying this country music in Nashville and all these wonderful musicians that there's just no turning back at this point. Which well, brings I us... Oh, I was going to say, I don't think you're going to run out because the thing is that you just got to keep on living, right? Well, there's, there's an anxiety. I don't know if it's in every songwriter, but ever since I was a teenager... There have been times where I thought I had written my last song, and you know, I started really? to get, I started to get worried that, oh my gosh, I, and then I then I try to force. Is it myself. because is it because the song is so great? Is like when you come up with that really great song, and then it's like you're like, this is it. How am I ever going to be able to come up with a better song than that? Is that how? Is that the feeling? That sort of is the feeling because a lot of my songs are inspired, you know. So so you can't duplicate that inspiration per se so when you try to when you've just written a song that comes off very well because it was inspired um, and just came to you naturally and then you sit down with your guitar whatever instrument you may use to write trying to write a song as good as that it can lead to a level of frustration you know you're almost better waiting for the inspiration to come than trying to force it but me as a writer I generally just write every day so that I'm constantly working my craft. So that way, when you do get put under like pressure, under the gun, um, you you know you can deliver. And the re can, the yeah. reason why is because you are exercising your gift constantly. So that way, um, if you ever are put to the test, you know you can deliver. So that's such a great thing. Yeah, I, I'm very happy to uh, have that ability. And yes, it it's. Um, it's quite challenging, but whenever that challenge does come my way, like with this new jingle that we were asked to write for Ellen Kay uh, in her morning show on 103.5, um, we, we wrote that thing and, and that came very quickly. That's right. You know, so... Um, and at first, you didn't like the pressure that I kind of put placed on you, but um, I kind of knew it needed to be done because... Um, I just know that um, you're a hard worker, so 
if I'm going to put something on your plate, um, I don't, I know that there's not many things that you're going to push it back at me and say, I'm not doing this. You're going to, you're going to do it and you're going to do the best at it. Well, so. you do the same, man, but, I, but we both appreciate a good challenge. Yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> and, and not only was the, the thing with Ellen, um, a wonderful challenge, a great challenge, but, but a wonderful opportunity. Uh, so, so that there was something at stake there that was very, very important to us and to our careers that, that people enjoyed the jingle and the way that we performed it. So there's, you know, I, I see. And you can do this, you know, and it's like, you know, you can write jingles and, you know. Well, here's another thing too, aside from thank you very much for the compliments on the songwriting. Um, however, there's so much to the Swansons that, that, that makes us who we are. One being you and your huge personality and your presence on stage and in video. Um, today, we shot an amazing video. Yes, as, so much fun. Uh, before, before I address what we were doing particularly, uh, I would like to just kind of talk about the fact that we go out on a weekly basis um, and shoot video for our live show that, that is in sync. We, we, you know, we play it to, a, to a click so that it, this video is in sync. And, and, um, and it's amazing the things that the places that we go, um, the people that we meet, the experiences that we have, and the fact that we have just a, just an outstanding uh, videographer and friend, and who's also going to be part of our podcast That's on a regular right. basis, and that is Vic. Vic, Vic, Video our videographer. Vic. We love Vic. And, so grateful um, to have met him, and I was just telling him that today, like at the video shoot, how grateful we are to have met such a talented, talented person that you know is important to what we do you know right. yeah not only that but 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 vic um you know he has carp launch to be as creative as he wants to be so he utilizes his craft and his his expertise and and putting together this this beautiful film is like it's like watching a short movie each and every video and then that's why you guys have to come out and see our live show um it's unlike any other and and it's, it's constantly um, a work in evolving. progress and evolving yeah. and relevant. And we, we work very hard, but I think w the, my favorite part, I don't know about you, but when we go out weekly on these video shoots, the best part is that even though we're working, it's so fun. It's so much fun, you know? It's a great feeling. To this video, um, we had the opportunity to work with a whole bunch of uh, gentlemen from a car club called uh, Cruisin Brothers. That's right. Excuse so me. we go different places Please let me, Excuse me, week. let me get a drink from the... Uh, from the country to Swanson's Cup for a moment. Clear my throat. Thank you. <laughs> Cruising Brothers. Cruising Brothers what I, what I Car Club. And they, we got a hold of them. They're a local club here. And we got a hold of them. And we um, they <sighs> met us. We planned a date. And a wonderful man named Frank, who's actually like the leader. Um, he basically kind of set the, help us set this up. And it was such a, so much fun. I mean, these cars are classics. They are You're unbelievable. Talking 1962. Clean, spotless, amazing. I mean, all for, different styles, too. So many. Different types of makes and models. That I think that was one of the coolest things about the video today. And I can't wait for y'all to see it. That's my hope that the audience feels the same way. So they, they anticipate what's coming up next for the next Swanson show. So it's not just like going and seeing the same show One over thing. and over yeah, again. Right. There's always new surprises. There's always new things going on. We have a lot of new musicians we play with. Just a lot of things different. But yes. the video, go ahead. No, I was just about the musicians. No, I was going to say leading into the, all the different musicians. I mean, we are so lucky to have just tons of professional musicians that um, enjoy playing with us and we're able to take as many shows as we can because we have we have a multitude a lot of musicians multitude multitude of musicians that we um, play with and we're so thankful for all of them here in southern california and even that in nashville yeah that's that's a, a big plus for us and we'll talk about all of them in fact uh, we they won't may, get into that today but we will be interviewing say they might them might be our yeah some we of our have guests, a lot of special guests people uh, we play with and we have um, a variety of fiddle players bass players Drummers, uh, keyboard, brilliant keyboard, just one keyboard player. Even other photographers or promoter, you know, anybody that we kind of work with, we'll be having them on the Swansonville podcast. And yes, and we'll keep track of the, our weekly video shoot. Like today, again, uh, we had uh, I don't know how many cars we 
About 15, I'd say. 15 classic cars. Oh, it's just, amazing. Yeah, just, 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 it, and, and, you know, we always seem to run into something spectacular on these adventures. You know, we go to this place or that place and we, we ad lib all the way. We kind of know where we're going. We have a, a, a general idea of our destination. And, but when we arrived, we were just like blown away by what God has done to the, the sky. Or... Yeah, I was so thankful for this morning too because like he cleared those skies. The sun was shining. Like every morning, literally this month, it is October by the way. And all the days prior to this day, the mornings have been overcast, cloudy, very cold. Not today. Today was... I, w I was praying and it literally, this was a dream come true because I had an idea in my mind for this particular shoot and we actually scheduled it and made it happen. So it was like, wow, I feel so happy and grateful. It went very, very, it couldn't have gone any better. And I'm looking forward to next week. Next week, yes. Next week, next song. We, we, we've got a new album uh, that we're, we're, we're going back we're to Nashville in, in production. less than two weeks, right? That's right. We'll be back in Nashville finishing this new album that we're t tentatively calling... Bam! That's right. So that's um, it's coming off really, really well. In fact, the song that you hear for the Swansons, Swansonville, Swansonville. is called "The Outsider, Outsider," and that is uh, a track off of our new album. New album, Bam! Bam! Right. Which is coming out sometime in the first quarter of next year. But this year, we're pushing hard towards the end of the year with "Country This." "Country This" is a very, very important project for us. It was a turning point in our careers. And um, we're having a lot of fun with it. We released two singles. Valentine was our first single. And then we followed that with... Move uh, Forward. Move Forward, which has won a, an award for the video. That's right. Best music video for Move Forward, which we worked really hard on with Vic. That's right. That's right. And Joe here. Joe and I and Vic, the three of us, worked for many weeks. I think this the Move Forward was one of the longest... Because uh, it didn't get done in one day. Right. It got done over like about a six week period, I'd say, of us shooting, meeting up, um, and then the editing process, of course, um, and revisions. So um, that is out on our website, theswansonsmusic.com. Theswansonsmusic.com. Right on the homepage, you can check out our video Move Forward. Yes, this is an awesome experience. And, uh, and, and like we said, we're going to have special guests. Um, today, ha we happen to have uh, our vocal coach. Uh, That's right. She'll be joining us. She'll be joining us, and, and we'll be interviewing her and sharing some time with her, and we can't wait for that. So, what you got? You got the harmonica there. Look up. I'm sorry. Sometimes you just have to lay down a little bit of jam like that. Joe and Angie, ladies and gentlemen. No way will I get invited. I'm already deep inside. Um, we're here today with a very special guest, and actually it's our first guest on our very first podcast, and we're happy to have her here today. Why don't you introduce our, our uh, vocal coach again? Wonderful. We have Lori Kibbe here with Lori Kibbe Vocal Training. Hi. Thank you for coming. Great to be here. I love I you guys. I'm your biggest you. fans. The Thank biggest you. Swanson fan. Lori <laughs> is responsible for uh, our voices, and uh, she's been training Angie for, for quite some time. How long has it been, Angie? I think it's two Oh, definitely over a year. Yeah, for year sure. Year and a half. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think when it, we get to December, it'll be like two years. Wow. Time flies. I know. Yeah, Time flies so almost two fun. years. And uh, and we have a lot of fun. We sing together, and uh, and she corrects us and gets us harmonizing well, and we have a lot of fun. What about, uh, where did you begin singing? Oh, I started as a kid. I remember being six and um, being put on this piano at a, at a party and just said to sing and um, ever since then I had the bug I loved it yeah um, majored in music in college and music performance and then started teaching then met a man named Seth Riggs who introduced me to speech level singing and revolutionized my teaching and my singing and um, that's what I've been doing ever since and where did you meet Seth I met him at a worship conference of all things and he was giving some vocal training to the worship leaders and I'd been teaching previously private mm -hmm. voice teaching and when I saw his technique I thought this is this is revolutionary and I've been doing it for 20 years and you so you amazing. teach his his technique yes yes oh, I do. I'm cool. one of his certified teachers oh wonderful oh, that's awesome love it love it 
So what is different about his comparatively to what you were doing previously? Well, it's, it's seamless. It takes probably half the time to teach that transition from chest voice to head voice as it did before. Um, it really focuses on the stability of our larynx, if, that, if I can get technical, and, and really talks about vocal health. Anybody can learn to sing? Or do you have to have a, a natural ability to begin with? I believe anybody can sing. Anybody I can do sing. believe that if there's some pitch issues and maybe some ear things, that, that is some ear training, that might take a little bit longer. But in terms of your voice is a muscle, and you're using that muscle very much and training that muscle very much like you're training any other muscle in your body. So. I just heard uh, Bradley Cooper went into some extensive vocal training for the movie A Star Is Born. Oh, I can't wait to see it. And it was, it was, a, so it was yeah. eight, eight months of, of vocal training. My, my mother was actually telling me about that. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what, what type of training he did, but, sure. but I heard um, from some of the people that have seen the movie that he sounds quite good. Mm -hmm. I've seen know. some of the previews and I was, I'm really excited to see And his it. claim is that he did not know how to sing prior to, and I don't know how to evaluate that, whether that would be... He, you know, people say I don't know how to sing, but some people sing pretty good and when they say that, you know. Right, right. So it's hard to tell, but uh, I was just curious if, if people were able to learn just from having no ability. I know that Angie, your experience was uh, with really no, little to no uh, vocal experience. Zero, zero at all, and I came such a long way just by working with Lori mm -hmm. week by week, and it's just so amazing that we met you. I feel like... Um, I couldn't have done our last record without you. So Aww. is this so great? And I just can't wait to get better, you know? It's funny you say that because the last, it's probably been the last two or three weeks that you've really been on my heart. And I thought, okay, I really want to take her to that next level vocally. And I think I even texted you, hey, we got to get you in. I want to get you some more private lessons and get you, because we work a lot on your harmonies. Right. And you as a couple. And I'm like, I want to really take her to that next level yeah. vocally. Let's do it. And I want to really spend some time doing that. Yeah, that'd that's be awesome. great. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, it's funny. And you, you have a, a beautiful voice um, and obviously a lot of experience. What would be the highlight of your, your life as far as singing? Do you have a moment in time where, where you sang for a, a group of people or an individual or just maybe by yourself that you remember distinctly as being one of your favorite memories singing? Wow, that's a great question. There's been seasons in my life of singing for different venues. You know, there was, I did, I had my season of theater, or I did, I remember doing 42nd Street and learning how to learn how to tap dance. Really? And all that theater <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, how cool is that? And, um, which is really great because it's kind of prepared me for what I do today. But, um, and then I sang in bands and um, that's just a lot of fun to sing to a live crowd like that. Um, so that, that was a really neat time. Um, I still, my all-time favorite is singing for church. Yeah. I mean, it'll always be leading worship and, and you know, being able to connect people to the Lord through song. I mean, that'll always be my favorite. We have That's had the awesome pleasure of experiencing your singing uh, worship at, at church and, and I've shared uh, uh, on several occasions the, mm -hmm. the church that you go to. And um, your, your voice is angelic and, mm -hmm. and literally... Um, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, but uh, it has brought me to tears literally every time I've heard it. You just have a beautiful, beautiful voice, and what a better way to use it than, than using it for the Lord. Okay, what, what would you say was your greatest achievement? Um, and, and basically as far as um, goals you set for yourself and kind of reaching those goals, what was your highlight hmm. of achievements? In terms of music and, and singing, singing and, and all of yes. that. Um, wow, that's such a great question because it's, there's, there's, I feel like there's kind of two, two sides of me. You know, there's the teacher part of me that, that is striving constantly to try to get a quicker, better response from my students and a quicker diagnosis of the person that comes in off the street, you know, trying to figure out quickly what, what goes on with them. and. I think that's a great accomplishment is that I've been able to do that very quickly. Right. Um, they can come in and probably within the first 10 minutes I can decide, hey, we've got this issue, this issue, this issue. Here's the diagnosis. Here's the, the tools to fix it. Wow, that's amazing. Or at least I yeah. remember when I first started, it would take weeks of trying to get to know someone before I could figure out exactly what <laughs> needs to be done with their voice. And now after 20 years of teaching, I can do it in 
pretty That's quickly. Amazing. Cool. Would yeah. you say then you, you get more gratification from teaching than performing? And not, not church performing, uh, obviously that being separate. Um, but, I but believe I do. You do? I really do. Um, I, I did the theater and the, the band and the performing and I, I enjoyed it. But um, to be able to actually pour into someone else and to see them grow and then to see them being used, whether it's in a worship environment yeah. or like you guys are everywhere and... And to see that, that, maybe I had some hand in that, or maybe my fingerprints on it well, somewhere. Well, you've had, a, I'm sorry to interrupt, like but you've had a big hand in, in us. <laughs> That's, uh, and, and that is big just hand. really, and, and really you can wonderful. see, because Angie has grown by leaps and bounds, um, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. And you talking about taking her to the next level, uh, what mm -hmm. you do is very, very special. And I'm privileged to be able to come and, and see this and be a part of it. And I know you're trying to work on my voice a little bit too, and you know, a little here and there, a little bit here and there. So <laughs> that's cool. I was wondering, uh, do you have uh, any favorite artists currently, or 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 in your lifetime, is there any any uh, singer or group that you've admired or looked up to? Oh, I've always loved the the greats, Aretha and Etta James, and just their soul and their style for music. Oh yeah. They're just, they're timeless. Right. So you and like the gospel, spiritual, the uh, Yeah, soul. I really do kind of lend towards that R&B, you know, um, jazz kind of influence. I yeah. love that. Um, but I feel like I've done so many different styles, you know. And, um, do you enjoy any particular style more than another? Yeah, what is your favorite style of music? Oh, wow. So I, country. I know. Well, I <laughs> yeah, I got like, no, I really do like country. Um, um, I'm trying to get into more of this, um, the newer music, which kind of doesn't have a lot of instruments in it. I'm, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about that. Right. Um, and, um, but I don't think there's a style I don't like. Yeah. I love all, all, all kinds all of music. music. Yeah, because yeah. everyone brings all these different types of styles of music, and there's something wonderful about each, each one. Each and every creative. one, yeah. yeah. Right. But there's a difference between just being an artist or being a singer or being a great singer and being an actual coach. So at what point, I know when you said you were sick, but when you're, when you're younger, you're just singing, you know, at what point did you realize I want to be a coach? I want to, you know, do that. What mm -hmm. was the transition for you? Well, like I said, back, back when I was doing theater, I was out of college and, and, um, majored in music, did some shows in the area at, at, you know, community and dinner theater and things like that. And I thought, okay, I have a, I have a director, a friend of mine owned a dance studio. And, um, and she's like, you know, I, I need some voice lessons. I mean, we don't have a voice teacher. Can you come in and start teaching voice? And I'm like, okay, you know, I've done, I'll do that on the side. And, you know, I've, I've had enough training, I think, to be able to help others, <laughs> which you've got to be careful of that. Um, but so I just kind of started dabbling in it and doing theater at the same time. And I thought, wow, this is really rewarding teaching others. Right. There's really something special about being able to see others improve and being able to rise up and do multiple different things. Right. So I think it was when I was out of college. What would you say is like, do you enjoy um, smaller children or adults or kind of what kind of, or do you just anybody? Yeah, just I have students, any, anybody I have students, my youngest one was six, and my oldest one is in her 80s. Wow. So, oh, and everyone in between. Fan. Anybody in between. Yeah. Anybody who wants to work on anybody their Anybody who works hard. Anybody who, you know, takes takes the tips, takes the exercises, goes home. You can just tell those that are on fire about it, and those that are just doing it because, you know, they don't put a lot of Because they're going to show up it. every week. And the thing is that you're not really going to see a lot of improvement if you're only doing it once a week. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you give the skills, it's like, you got to do your homework. Mm -hmm. You know, most musicians know that. They got to do their homework. You know? uh, absolutely. Yeah. I had, a, had an instructor once that said, um, repetition is reputation. Yes. I love that. I love it too. I love that. That's what did Arnold Palmer say? That, quote, that was a good quote. The more I practice, the luckier oh, yeah. I get. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> the more I practice, the luckier I get. That's yeah. true. Yeah. One of the things that, that, that we do during the vocal lessons um, is we sing together. Mm -hmm. And... Um, <laughs> It gives Angie and I uh, practice in, in not switching harmonies and staying, you know, kind of in our lane when you throw in the third part harmony. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't we do a little something that today? Maybe, okay. maybe uh, for our listening we'll audience. Out. And, yeah. and um, I wanted to ask you one more thing, though. Uh, we're speaking about hard work. 
And uh, we happen to know that uh, you're a workaholic. And you, know, you, you teach and teach and teach and teach, and God bless you and all the students that you have. Are you looking for any additional students at this point in time? Oh, always. Okay. So, we, so, <laughs> yeah. so how would they be able to get a hold of you? Um, if you Google Lori Kibbe Vocal Training with a K, and um, I, I'll pop right up. You can text me and email me, call me, and I'll schedule a lesson as soon as I can. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, this is a song that um, we work on just about every, every week, right? Um, road full of holes, and we'll just sing a chorus of that. And get our notes ready. Kibby, we're so, so uh, privileged and honored to have her here today. Yeah, God bless you, you Gloria, and thanks for being on our podcast. Peace, y'all. Welcome back to Swansonville. No way will I get invited. I'm already deep inside. I can't share. Finley. We're back here in Swansonville. That's right. Swansonville podcast. How y'all doing? Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to play a little something today, aren't we, Ange? We're, we're going to play a little something in, uh, uh, I think at every show that we do, every podcast, we'll play aside from with our guests. That's right. We'll play maybe a little something um, off of one of our albums. Something new. Something new. We'll play a little something new today for you. Um, the song is off it's new, off a of BAM. Off a of BAM. So let's just do a little bit of uh, Rest of Tonight. That's what it's called. Rest, Rest of Tonight. Of tonight. This being our first podcast, we are just thrilled that you would uh, be joining us and tune we'll in again and tune in again. Tune we'll in again. We'll, we're going to we'll do this on a weekly basis. Once, week. once, once a, week. a week, we'll be here and uh, for your listening and entertainment pleasure, and also for ours because we just happen to love doing this and we love engaging with you fans and 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 people all over the United States, all over the world, uh, for that matter. And uh, we are the Swansons. We love the we fact that you guys you. listen to us. That's and, right. Uh, you can catch us on thesmonstersmusic.com. Until next time. That's right. Peace. And peace. God bless. God bless. See y'all.